What is good everyone? Today we got something different. Today I'm going to show you five young guns from 2020, 21, series one that could potentially make you a couple dollars in the near future. So sit back, relax, and let's get right into the video. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. It's Red Bulls here, and yes, today we have a different one for you. We are gonna look at five potential young guns from 2020, 2021, series one, that could be flipped for a few extra pocket change. We all like a little bit of extra change, you know? So in this video, we're gonna look at five that could potentially make you a little bit of money. So let's just start off with the basics here. If you're looking to make hundreds of dollars off this, it's just not gonna happen. This video is not for you. If you are not a fan of the flipping or the investing part of the hobby, then this video is probably not for you. But there are stories like with the hobby being the way it is and myself buying boxes and opening for you guys, it gets expensive. It really does. And I've actually found flipping cards on the side actually helps and it's actually kind of fun. You get more into the game. It's just a different way of looking at it. But anyways, here's a little story I had early in the year. Last year, I bought a lot of two or three, I think it was two young guns of Joel Farabee. I think I paid $2 each, which would be a total of $4. And then this year he has that game where he goes off and his young gun just goes to 20 or 30, 20 or $30 young gun. So stuff like that, it's like, you can't really be mad at the people flipping the cards. They just had good judgment or they just got lucky. But another rule is just, you have to have time. And I'm not saying go put all your life savings into flipping sports cards because it's just it's just not ideal it's just a nice little hobby on the side um yeah and if it is have to have time too i mean one as you've seen for young guns last year thatcher demko in the playoffs um Jonas corpusalo had that big night where he had what 50 60 70 saves and his young gun went from like two dollars to seventy dollars you just got to be ready you just got to know who you have in your collection know who you're stocking up in and once they have that game that one game where they score their first multi-hole game they have a big night, you know, five points, or it's their first career game, all those kind of stuff, that will help you make your cards, get a little bit more value on it. So you just gotta be ready. You gotta, you just gotta take advantage of the opportunity, know what your card's about, and yeah, without further ado, let's get right into this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited. So first young gun will be right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further though, I just wanna point out these are not in any order. So this is not one to five or five to one. It is just five young guns that I could see just potentially making a couple dollars in the end. But to start us off, let's start us off with Victor Soderstrom, the Arizona Coyote defenseman. He was drafted in the first round, 11th overall. And if I do say so myself, I didn't know much about this guy until I watched him in the World Juniors. This guy is, he is unreal. It was really fun to watch him in the World Juniors. I can't wait to see him play for the Coyotes. I know... The Coyotes aren't really a team that normally would excel young guns or, uh, overall price. But I mean, this guy, he's, he's built to be a good defense. He's six foot, 196 pounds. He is from Sweden, obviously. The name says it itself, Soderstrom. Skutskar, Sweden. And his stats aren't actually that bad for being a D-man. And I actually do have a couple D-men I'm showing today. So this is the first of a couple. So let's start with some stats. In 2019-20, he played in the SHL, which is obviously the the professional league in Sweden, on a loan. He did he appeared in 35 games where he scored five goals, 11 assists, for a total of 16 points, which again not bad. 16 points in 35 games in a men's league that's that's pretty good. And I say that sounds bad when I say men's league, but anyways. And then in that same season, he goes and plays in the World Juniors, where I first seen this guy, and I was very impressed. In his first World Juniors. He played in seven games. And let's just go off the record here. Sweden has been so good for the last couple of World Juniors. Just can't get the gold, but super, super fun team to watch. Anyways, so in that World Juniors in 1920, he played seven games. He had one goal and five assists for six points. Another, another almost a point of game player in the World Juniors. And then let's fast forward to this year's World Juniors where he went back and I was super excited because I was really hoping he's going to play again this year. He appeared in five games where he only had, he had five assists. I mean, a point of game player this year in the World Junior. 
you got to be happy with that. Very good defenseman. He, was, he likes to play physical, but he can also, he's so good at passing. His passes are so good. And I remember just watching this guy this year and I was like, this guy's passes are so on point. But anyways, so this year with all the hockey world kind of being all over the place, obviously the season got, uh, it didn't start on time. So the Arizona Coyotes did loan him to the AIK and he played in 12 games where he got one goal and five assists for six points. He had six points in 12 games. Again, it's not all about points when you're a D-man, but when, when you can shoot the puck like this guy does, it's it's pretty fun to watch. And he very, very good at passing. Very, very good. And I can't stress that enough. So then I guess we do have an NHL slash AHL season. So he's playing for the AHL affiliate, the Tucson Roadrunners, the Coyotes affiliate of the AHL where he's played in 11 games. Keeping in mind that season is not, it has not started. It's only been a couple games, obviously 11 games for the Tucson Roadrunners. 11 games where he has one goal and one assist. He has two points in 11 games as of right now. And again, I, I do see this guy. I don't see this guy's young gun going for, you know, 50, 60, $70 again. Again, this is not a video that's gonna make you a $1,000. You know what I mean? It's just gonna be, you just gotta be ready when this guy hits the ice and his value will go up. So let's talk awards now. I mean, like I said, he's played in the World Juniors back-to-back -back years. In 2018-19, he played in the U18 for Team Sweden. And that year he did win gold. So he does have a gold medal. It, it was the U18. And then in 2019-20, he won bronze in the World Juniors, like the U20 World Junior Championship. And then this year, Sweden didn't f uh, finish in medals this year, which was kind of sad because, I mean, they'd had that really long streak of wins, but they lost that one this year. Didn't get a medal, but he was named top three player on Team Sweden this year. So that is very, that is, that's very good. That is very good. He was a top three player on his team this year at the World Juniors. That is very good to hear. So let's talk card price for Victor Soderstrom. Right now, about... March 14th, you can pick his young gun up for anywhere from two to four dollars. I would stay low if you could pick one up about two dollars, two, three dollars. I don't know if I'd go four. I'd pick one up for two dollars. I do obviously have two of his right now, and I think I have another one or two on the way. I do see this guy going up. I don't like I said, I don't see it being a 50, 60 dollar young gun, but I do see it going up a couple bucks, maybe 10, maybe 15. But again, a profit is a profit. You just gotta you gotta realize that it's not gonna be, oh, I'm gonna hold on to this guy until he's a hundred dollar young gun, because it's not gonna happen. It may maybe happen, but the chance of that, very slim. So again, with this guy, Victor Soderstrom, just be ready. I mean, the whenever the hype is, so I mean that first game, that first game he scores a goal, be ready. So yeah, Victor Soderstrom, very good D-man coming up for the Arizona Coyotes and just Here's some reviews that I've actually read on this guy. So, I quote, he makes superb first pass and can skate the puck out of his zone reasonably well too. His battle level is through the roof. And that is eprinksidesports.com that said that. So that is, that's a very, and a lot of people are very high on his skating and his passing. So, I, I, like I said, I see in the World Juniors, very good player. He's confident with the puck. He is a reasonable player who plays with poise and patience. That is future considerations that said that one. So again, Victor Soderstrom, a good low buy to make a couple dollars. I think that is a decent buy and that is why I have a couple of his young guns. So let's go on to the next one. Okay, so next man up is a name that everybody should know of by now. He is playing very well this season with the LA Kings. It is Gabe Velarde. I do really love Gabe Velarde. I've watched him play in the OHL, the Ontario Hockey League. Very good down there. And he just continues to keep putting up numbers. I think this guy is a decent buy. And I mean, look at those jerseys. Are those jerseys not just, that young gun card is just so nice. But anyways, like Soderstrom, he was, or Velarde was a first round pick. He is also a first round pick, 11th overall in his respective draft. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. Very well built, very good power forward. And that will make him good because he is a very good centerman. So, 
And he is also a Canadian. He's from Kingston, Ontario. It's a drive down the 401 from myself. And actually, funny enough, I did get to see him play in a couple games when he played for the Kingston Frontenacs of the OHL. So speaking of the Kingston Frontenacs, in that season that I went to go see him, that was the 2017-18 season. He played for Kingston Frontenacs, like I said. He got into 32 games where he scored 22 goals and 36 assists. That was enough for 58 points in 32 games. So right then, you knew this guy was going to be good, but how good? He also did win the Memorial Cup with the Windsor Spitfires. He did get traded to, or he did get traded from Windsor to Kingston, but he won the Memorial Cup in 2016-17 with the Windsor Spitfires. So that is a very, very good trophy in the um, OHL, WHL, the QMJHL. Very good trophy to win down there. And then, so he's done the OHL. It's time to move up. He gets drafted. We're now playing our first season in AHL with Ontario. He only got he only appeared in four games in the 2018-19 season, where he only got one point. But I mean, one one assist in four games. You can't really you can't really tell anything then. So 2019-20, he starts the season off in the AHL Ontario, where he's got into 32 games, where he scored nine goals, 16 assists for 25 points. So his first kind of I don't know, taste of action, the AHL. He put up 25 points in 32 games, which is very good. I am very, that was very impressive. But that year, as we know, the LA Kings have, they do have reinforcements coming to help, but they're kind of, they're doing a lot better this year than last year. But he did get into like some games last year with the NHL Los Angeles Kings, where he got into 10 games and had seven points. That was, I noticed this guy last year putting up the seven points in 10 games, and I knew this was going to be a special player. In that season, he had three goals, four assists. So then let's go to this year, where he actually makes the big club right from the beginning. So in 26 games this year so far, he has six goals and six assists for 12 points. I do like Gabe Velarde, especially at his price right now. His price, again, these are priced as of March 14th. I see his young guns going for about four to nine dollars. I mean, the cheaper you can pick it up, the better. I do see Gabe Velarde's young gun being more than nine dollars. Even if you go with the nine dollar route, I do see it being more down the road. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna be like a next week kind of flip, but you gotta think LA does have some talent coming. Quentin Byfield still isn't even playing with the LA Kings. They're a young team, and it just it's going to play out down the road. I do feel like I should be picking up more Gabe Velarde because once that team starts getting it together, they will be a pretty good team. They're just going through really rebuild right now, which is okay. Everybody does it. But once he gets the help, his points will go up, and you'll see the, the card value go up. So if you can pick one up about 4 or $5 right now, that is a very good buy, especially because he is 7th in rookie points with 12 points this year, and he's actually 4th. I'm pretty sure he's tied third with Tim Stutzla in rookie goal scoring with six. So, you know, I, I do think Gabe Velarde is a good buy. So in my, if I wouldn't pay more than $10 right now, just because the card price right now is four to nine. So I'd kind of keep it lower. And again, with the whole flipping cards, you can send offers too. If someone has it $5 or, or send an offer, try four, try three, try 350. I mean, it, the worst thing to say is no. So Gabe Velarde is is a buy and you know what i'm actually going to throw up my red bulls guarantee there it is the red bulls guarantee i guarantee you that gabe velarde's young gun will be worth more than nine dollars whether it's this year next year the la king is gonna be too good that his price stays the same he has very good hands very skillful he's always he's he's at his best when he's below the hash marks and what i mean by that is the battles along the boards or behind the net he gets his body in there. He's a very strong guy who likes to push his way through and he makes a living out in front of the net. Very good player. I do see this card being more than four to $9. So I'd watch the Gabe Velarde Young Guns and I feel like I should be picking up more as well. Gabe Velarde is a good buy in my books. Okay, so where are my Leaf fans at? Next up, we got Timothy Lilgren. This guy, I think he's super, super underrated especially for his card price. I would be buying into Timothy Lilgren right now if I were you. I know he's not on the active Leaf 
roster right now. But this guy is, I've, I've watched, I've, being from Belleville, I've watched him play the Belleville Senators of in the AHL. This guy is real. This guy is for real. I really like Timothy Lilgren, just like Rasmus Sandin. I do think those two are a big piece of the Toronto Blue Line going forward. But anyways, again, like I said, he's a defenseman from Sweden. He was drafted in the first round by the Leafs, 17th overall. He's six foot, 192 pounds. I, I, it's, he's just so, and for the size, he's so fast and so, just so slick. Very good puck mover. So let's, I want to talk, let's talk some stats now for Timothy Lilgren. Like I said, seeing him in the AHL, very, very good player. So in 2017-18, he did start in the AHL with the Toronto Marlies, where he played 44 games. He had one goal, 16 assists for 17 points. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that was the year that they won the AHL championship, the Calder Cup. Now, 17 points in 44 games, you got to think being in his on a Calder trophy or Calder Cup winning team. Wow. You got to think that he was probably a bottom bottom 4 D man. He's probably on that third pair. I mean, playing 44 games, that's about half a season, so you got to think there was still a lot more room to grow there. Being his first year, 17 points in 44 games, I'm okay with that. And also in that season, he did go to the World Juniors and played for Team Sweden where he played in 7 games. He had one goal and one assist. So two points in seven games. As it was a little, again, a defenseman. He's not going to put up 14 points in a seven-game stand in a tournament like that. But I was kind of, I was kind of expecting a little more watching him in that World Juniors. But then the next year in 2018-19, he got to play in the AHL yet again for about 43 games. So one less than the season before, where he put up two more goals. He had. Three goals, 12 assists for 15 points. So, I mean, he went from 17 and 44 games to 15 and 43 games, but he did find the back of the net two more times in that second year at the AHL. So, Timothy Lilgren, a kind of a slow, slow-ish start. I mean, it's still decent, man. I, I, I still think it's decent. And then he played 2019-20. He got into 11 games with the Toronto Maple Leafs, where he only had one assist, which, again... He was getting your feet, in the, your feet wet at that point. One point in 11 games. But, again, goes back to the AHL. Plays 40 games. He puts up 5 goals and 25 assists. That's good for 30 points in 40 games last year in the AHL. And, again, that season got cut short. Like, could you imagine if that season didn't get cut short, what he would have done at the Toronto Marlies? 5 goals. That is, like, that's... Unreal, and 25 assists to go with it, so he had 30 points in 40 games. Keeping in mind, the year before that, he had 15 points in 43 games, and the year before that, he had 17 in 44. So, you got to think that the offense is coming. The Toronto Maple Leafs have groomed him very well, and, oh, wait. Yeah, he's playing this year, too. So, in nine games this year, he has one goal, six assists, seven points in nine games. He is finding the offense to his game in the last two years, like I said, it kind of was a slow start, but it wasn't really a slow start. They groomed him well, and I see Timothy Lilgren being a very, very good defenseman for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the future. Him and Rasmus Sandin, I do see being very good. But Timothy Lilgren, for the price that I seen getting paid on March 13th, 3 to $5 that you could pick this card up for. Now, I'd be sticking, obviously you want to buy the low, low end. $3, I think, is a steal for this guy. And you know what makes this special? Again, you have to know this before. Like, you don't have to know this, but again, it's a big part in flipping cards is look at the market. I mean, take a look at, you know, Victor Soderstrom playing in Arizona compared to Timothy Lilgren playing in Toronto. Toronto is a big market team, definitely bigger than the Arizona Coyotes. So just, just the fact that he's wearing a Leaf sweater, I see this guy's young gun doubling in price. Once he becomes a full-time NHLer, and puts the points up like he is in the AHL. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good buy. So again, I'm gonna throw my Red Bulls guarantee card out there. Timothy Lilgren is a good buy. So keep your eye out for Timothy Lilgren Young Guns. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there is one Young Gun that is impressing me the most. It has got to be this guy, Connor McMichael. I am super excited again into talking about this guy. 
I am a big Connor McMichael fan. Watching him play for Team Canada the last two years of the World Juniors. Uh, just seeing him tear it up in the OHL with the London Knights. Just crazy. So again, this is a bit, this is a young gun. It's a little more expensive than the, than the ones I showed earlier, but I do see this guy's uh, card definitely doubling. This guy is going to be a very, very good player for the Washington Capitals. They have a very good first round pick, 25th overall. Very, very good. So let's get into Connor McMichael. Again, he's a centerman, drafted first round, 25th overall by the Washington Capitals. He's six foot and 187 pounds from Scarborough, on Ontario. Now, Connor McMichael is very, very impressive. He has very good stick handling, and he just reads the play so well. Always gets himself in, in uh, good situations. And, yeah, so let's get into stats about Connor McMichael. It's not all about the stats, but, I mean, this guy, it's too impressive not to tell you his stats. Okay, so in 2018-19, he played for the... On, the uh, the OHL's London Knights, where he played 67 games. He scored 36 goals and had 36 helpers to go along with that for a 72-point season. So, not a bad season, the OHL there, with 72 points and 67 games. Okay, that's good, right? Well, how about you go back out for your 2019-20 season with the Ontario Hockey League's London Knights. I don't know why I said Ontario Hockey League. Anyways, with the London Knights, he played in less games. He played in 52 games, scoring 47 goals and 55 assists for 102 points. He had 102 points in 52 games played in 2019-20. Absolutely unreal. Very, and that's and that's how you just like it's just unreal. Very, very good. But in that year, he also did go to the World Junior Championship where he did win gold that year with Alexi Lafreniere and Barrett Hayton. That team was gross to watch. And behind all those guys, Connor McMichael was very, very good. And we've seen it this year in the World Juniors. But in that World Juniors that we're talking about, when they won the gold, he appeared in seven games. He was a point game player, scoring five goals and two assists. And he just had an amazing tournament. Very, very good tournament. And then he goes out the next year to the World Juniors. So this past season, where didn't end the way we wanted to. Uh, yeah, but anyways, so he also played in seven games this tournament, scoring four goals and four assists for eight points. So he had one point more in the same amount of games played this year, but he just, he looks so much better this year. Like it just, every time he's on the ice, something was happening. So then this year with a shortened season and not, not knowing what's going on, he's actually playing his first pro season with the Hershey Bears in the AHL where they've had 11 games so far in their season. He's put up four goals and three assists for seven points in 11 games to start his AHL career off, which is very, I like that. That is, it's close to a point of game player in the AHL. And I do see Connor McMichael being very, very good for the Washington Capitals. I, I think maybe next year he gets in the lineup or maybe he's a late call up, who knows. I do think if he plays the whole season Hershey this year, it's not the worst thing for his career. I just can't wait to see what he ends with this year. But again, here's some of the awards and kind of stuff that's got him to where he is right now. In 2018-19, he played in the CHL's top prospect game. So that's the Don Cherry versus Bobby Orr game. In 2019-20, he won the gold medal in the U-20 World Junior Championship that I was talking about. And this last past season, like I said, the heartbreak, they did take away silver. So, I mean... In two World Juniors, he has a gold and a silver. That's pretty impressive to get to where he is now. And again, March 14th, his price are going 10 to $15. That actually kind of surprises me. I don't know if I'm kind of, I don't know if I'm iffy on if it's, I say if you find this card for $10 or less, I'm definitely telling you to pick it up. That is a Red Bulls guarantee right there that if you will definitely make more than $10 on this card as soon as he gets in the NHL. Now, again, I'm not saying break the bank, throw all your money at Connor McMichael. I'm just saying, you know, if you want to pick up two of his young guns for, I mean, I mean, even if you pick them up for $10 each, $20, once he plays and he gets, once he gets that first career goal, there'll be hype. Like I said, the hype is a big part of this. 
and it's, it's not like Washington doesn't have the talent to, I don't know, I don't know, favor the whole getting them points. I mean, it doesn't really need help with that, but I mean, it just helps when you have a very good team around you. Connor McMichael will definitely, definitely be more than a $10 young gun. I don't know if it's this year, but it might be next year. But I'm, I'm booking it right now. Connor McMichael is the real deal. Very good player. I'm saying pick up his young gun. Next up, we have another Washington Capital to follow Connor McMichael. This one is the big D man from St. Petersburg, Russia, Alexander Alexiev. And I know it kind of looks weird since there was two young guns last time. I actually have a couple of his young guns coming, Alexander Alexiev. I just, I actually reminds me, I should probably check on that because it's been a while. I did, I think about three of his young guns for a dollar each. Now, this guy, it's 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 hard to tell on defensemen. A defensemen, they don't make they don't make or break as much as forwards would. But this guy, I am saying, this guy is he's kind of a sleeper in my eyes. And a lot of people don't really Alexander Alexiev. Who? I think this guy is good. He is a big guy with a very very hard shot, and he does play physical as well. He's six four and two hundred and one pounds. He was drafted first round 31st overall again the big russian d he and he's not he doesn't he puts up points too so it's not like he's just the kind of stay at home defenseman he does actually put up some points and I, i'm impressed with this guy i know a lot of people overlook him but alexander Alexiev is a decent buy for me especially when his card prices on march 14th are reading one to four one to three dollars sorry i mean it's kind of hard to not see you pick up a young gun for a dollar and maybe have his debut or score his first goal. It's maybe a $5 young gun. So again, profit's profit. But I mean, Alexander Alexiev in my eyes is a decent player. Very good. So let's take, let's take a look at some uh, awards he's won first. So in 2015-16, he won silver at the U-17 World Hockey Championship. So again, starts his career off young with a silver in the U-17, which is pretty good, right? And then in 2018, he won bronze at the World Juniors, the U20 World Juniors. So a silver and a bronze, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, Russia, you kind of kind of expect them to have a gold there, but it is what it is. He has a silver and a bronze under his belt at two different World Hockey Championship and World Junior Championship. So stat line for this guy, again, like I said, big body, very hard shot. And he can put the puck in the net. He's a, he's very well at passing. Like he can find that seam right across. So let's get in some uh, stats here. In 2017-18, he played in the WHL, the Western Hockey League, for the Red Deer Rebels, where he played 45 games. He had seven goals, 30 assists for 37 points in 45 games. So that is a very that's a very good uh, defense this season. I in my eyes, I can't talk anymore, ladies and gentlemen. So bear with me. We're almost through here. But 37 points in 45 games played is a good season for a defenseman. Next year goes back out to the Western Hockey League, to the Red Deer Rebels, where he plays two more games that season with 49 games played. He gets double digits and goals. He has 10 goals, 33 assists for 43 points. So in two more, well, I can't do math today. In four more games in that season, he actually puts up more points, more goals, and more assists. So that was a very good last season in the WHL, and that was the last one he'd play in the WHL. In that same season, he that's the year he went to the World Junior Championship where he won bronze with Russia. He played in seven games, had two goals, four assists, for six points in that tournament. Again, I can't get I can't stress enough this guy has a very hard shot. Very good and hard shot. So 2019-20 is when he gets his first glimpse at I mean, pro hockey. He goes and plays with the AHL's Hershey Bears. He suits up for 58 games, scoring three goals, 18 assists for 21 points in his first season in the AHL. Again, not bad for a good defenseman. I mean, it's a guy that a lot of people are overlooking right now. So it's a guy that you could pick up a couple of his young guns. And if you have a couple dollars laying around, just see where it goes. I mean, this, I, like I said, I just bought three of his young guns for a dollar each. I'm not saying this is going to be a $15, $20 young gun, but I do think this guy will be more than a dollar young gun at some point. He just needs to make the show, and I mean, he's had success everywhere else. And like we all know, the season got put
put on hold and everything was kind of confusing. So this year he's actually playing on loan in the KHL. I don't even know how to say this, but I'm going to say it's Slavlant, Slavlat of the KHL. He played 55 games, eight goals, eight assists for 16 points. So he almost got 10 goals in the KHL, which is in my mind, a pretty good league. Honestly, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's probably next best to the NHL. AHL, I guess. I don't know. I think the a or KHL is a good league and to put up eight goals in it as a defenseman, you got to like that. 16 points in 55 games. You got to think he'll be playing either Hershey or making even the Capitals next year. Who knows? Anyways, D-men are harder to flip. So just keep that in mind when you go to buy Alexander Alexiev Young Guns, but to pick one or two up for a dollar, I don't, I just don't see it. I just, I just, I just find it hard to believe that it won't be more than a dollar, but we'll see. Again, like I said, hype is a big thing. They get one goal, the card price will go up. So just be ready on Alexander Alexiev. In my mind, that's a good buy for me that I've bought two or three of his young guns. So Alexander Alexiev is this young gun. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I know I said five, but this one had to make my list. I had to make it an honorable mention. It actually was part of the list and Alexiev was supposed to be my honorable mention. But with the current change of events of Jason Robertson absolutely playing out of his mind lately, his young gun did go up from when I seen it. So he was supposed to be on the list and not an honorable mention, but he is an honorable mention for me right now. Jason Robertson, the brother of Nick Robertson, whose young gun is also selling for a decent amount of money. He, his brother, Nick, plays for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, big market team. Not saying that's why. Nick Robertson did show what he had in the playoffs last year and impressed a lot of people. But we're talking about Jason Robertson right now, ladies and gentlemen. He can play the left or right wing. He's six foot three and 209 pounds. He was drafted in the second round. So not like the others in this countdown. He was actually drafted in the second round, 39th overall. He's from California, California. But he also, he played in the OHL. So that is interesting because obviously having the Belleville Bulls here, years back, you were allowed to have a couple, I don't know what the rule is, two or one, two, maybe three players from out of Canada being on your team. Anyways, we're getting off track here. I have a lot of stat lines to get into this guy because it's just, it blows my mind. I think Dallas really got a steal when they drafted Jason Robertson's second round. So let's get into the awards he's won first. So in 2018-19, he was a CHL top scorer in the whole CHL. So obviously in 2018, he led the OHL too, but in the whole Canadian Hockey League, Jason Robertson led the league with 117 points. That is huge. That is, that's an eye opener for a lot of people. In that same season, he was a top three player at the World Junior Championship for Team USA. So another very, very big title for him. And that year they won silver at the World Junior. So that was a very impressive year for Jason Robertson. I think that's really when I start opening. When you put up 117 points, that is best in the Canadian Hockey League. And you're a top three player for your team in the World Juniors and you take home a silver medal. I mean, you kind of, it, it, it's next best to gold. So you got to be happy with that. That was a huge year for Jason Robertson. So let's talk some stats now. Now we got a lot of stats to get through here just because, I don't know, I did, a, I did some, that's what kind of makes me kind of frustrated is I did some research on this guy, memorized a lot of stuff, and then just, he starts, his card price just go up. When I first originally had this guy in my countdown last week, he was selling for 4 to $7.00. It was a four to seven dollar young gun. I was like, wow, what a steal. Cause I think this guy's super underrated. I watched the Dallas Stars, watching him play. I was like, wow, I'm surprised. This young gun just isn't where I think it should be. Well, it's now reading a 15 or $20 card. So, and you know what? That's still not bad. I still think Jason Robertson is a very good player. I'd wait for that price to go down. I'd like to see it $10 or under before I'd start, before I'd even buy one again. Not saying he's not worth the 15 or $20, but I do think there's a little bit of hype around him right now, which plays into the seller's hand. So if you're the buyer, it doesn't work out in your hand. So I'd wait maybe the off season to pick up more Jason Robertson. 
because obviously the off season is when you can pick up some cards too. So I say hold off on Jason Robertson. Don't pay the $15, $20. I say hold off until it's under about 10 or under again. But I do really like Jason Robertson. This guy is an absolute stud, absolute animal. So like I've been trying to say for a couple times now, here's some stats. In 2016-17, he played for the Kingston Frontenacs, where he, put, he played in 68 games played. He had 42 goals, 39 assists for 81 points. 81 points in 68 games played. Very, very good. So then we go to the next season, 2017-18. For the Kingston Frontenacs yet again, this time he's an assistant captain on the Kingston Frontenacs. Playing in 68 games again, just like the year before. He was down a goal. He scored 41 goals. He had 46 assists for 87 points. So, again, up six points. The trend is up. You're seeing a trend here. And then we go to 2018-19. Again, another OHL season. This time he splits his stats between the Kingston Frontenacs, where he was assistant captain yet again, but got traded to the Niagara Ice Dogs in uh, that season at the deadline. In that season, he played in 62 games played. So, he played in six less games that season that he did the prior two years. He had 48, 48 goals, 69 assists for 117 points, which was the best in the OHL and best in the CHL. So right there, that is when eyes are being open. Jason Robertson is he's scoring points, scoring goals, getting a lot of assists, playing well. That's why Niagara got him to make a run. So that would be his last year in the OHL. In that year, he also did go to the World Junior Championship, where obviously he did take home silver. He had seven games played, one goal, six assists. He was a point of game player. That is, that's enough for me. That is very good. I do like Jason Robertson. So in 2019-20, he did get into three games with the big club in Dallas. He had one assist in those three games. Again, kind of like the little grin kind of thing. It's only three or four games. It's just kind of getting your feet wet. But in that season, he played 60 games. So again, 2019-20, he played 60 games with the AHL's Texas Stars, where he had 25 goals, 22 assists, 47 points in his first year, his first pro season. That is unreal. Again, people are not aware of Jason Robertson. This guy is very underrated in my eyes. I watched a couple Dallas Star games, and his sense is so good. His passing is good, and his shot is just Oh, it's so good. Like, I, I watched him score the goal when they had the empty netter out. I think it was a week ago. And he just picks it. Just unreal. So 47 goals, or sorry, 47 points in 60 games with the Texas Stars in his first pro season. Very, very good season. And this year, right now, the 2020-2021, he's played 18 games. He has four goals, nine assists for 13 points. So Jason Robertson has been on fire as of late. He has 13 points in 18 games. And he is currently sitting 5th in rookie points with those 13 points. And he is 12th in the rookie goals with 4. So again, Jason Robertson, I do really, really like this guy. I actually did pick up another one of his young guns when they were in that range of 4 to $7. I think I picked one up for $5. And again, they're selling for $15 to $20 right now. So I would wait personally until it goes back in single digits before buying Jason Robertson. Not, No disrespect to him. Guy's super underrated. Very, very good player. I do see this guy's card value going right back up again someday. I just don't know when that is. But under $10, solid buy. Jason Robertson is the real deal. So ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps up this video. I know it was a little different than what we're used to. So again, I'm sorry for that. But if you are new to the channel and you just came across this video, please help out and support the channel. A like, a subscribe always helps. I greatly appreciate it. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we did do a nice little countdown here from Gabe Velarde, Lilligren, McMichael, Alexiev, Soderstrom, and Robertson. If you like these kind of videos, let me know in the comments. It takes nothing to make these videos. I mean, it's fun. You get to learn the player a little better. And yeah, that's honestly, this side of the hobby is pretty fun too. I mean, I know a lot of people are against it, but I, I, I'm for it. And it's kind of fun. You get to watch the game more. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys like what you see, leave a thumbs up, 
subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think in the in the comments again this was not a video ranking the top five young guns or top five value it's just kind of five that i see that could potentially make you a little bit of money if you do like it hey we could give it another shot i could we could dig up five more young guns and do it all again maybe next week or the week after but until next time ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for the continued support i appreciate every single one of you guys hope you guys have a good rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video